But well, that, 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 that is my following question yes. because I'm looking at we've got legislation demanding that all government arms provide the information to the, the to, to the Auditor yes. General. The Auditor General, um, uh, Majid, Ali, Majid Ali, is saying, listen, we have other recommendations that were made uh, to strengthen the Auditor General's department um, regarding internal audit units within various ministry and departments, but to date, nothing has been implemented. He said it transcends different governments. My question to you is, is there not a penalty that is deterrent sufficient? Well, there isn't, because what happens is that there are cases, I mean, we have, we have, I have cases I have uncovered of things where you actually have it in writing, that the rules are broken, the laws are being broken, you make reports, mm-hmm. and they are not pursued. We do not have a, we do not have a tradition of prosecuting mm-hmm. white collar crime or pushing for, for for the for the solving of white collar crime as a priority and we need to grow that tradition. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I am hoping it will mm-hmm. emerge in this in this current season of we entering a kind of go over season. I mean Dr. Farrell spoke about it. You you spoke about the money owed to the contractors and it's a, tr- a tremendous financial contraction taking place in the country. And one hopes that out of this hardship, there would be some kind of an appetite for us to do things differently, for us to do things better. The procurement law has now gone through all of its parliamentary stages. It now has to be implemented. That will be an important thing to happen. It needs to happen as soon as possible. Mm. The Minister Imbert and, and Al Rawi and, and, and Prime Minister Rowley and all of the all of the parliamentary people who are working on this thing. It needs to happen as soon as possible. We need to get to the point where people are prosecuted and they do pay a penalty because you can't have a report that year after year talks about things that haven't happened, rip, rip, records that haven't been maintained, payments that have been made without author, authorization um, in, in the um, in, in the Auditor General's report. And the people who are responsible, because one of the interesting things about this, Rennie and listeners, is that these payments are payments where you can identify mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. signed the check. Yes. Who authorized it? Who signed off on it? This is not a mystery crime. Let us let us try to let's step back a bit and try to get a little clarity on what is this white collar crime. If you are walking through Woodford Square tonight at eleven o'clock, and some people lock your neck and knock you on the head and take your wallet and rough you up, you could easily be saying to the police, "Well, look, they got five hundred dollars from me, mm-hmm. and I didn't see who it was. It was right. dark. It was raining. I got bumped in the head." Two or three guys locked my neck. My money was stolen. And you didn't see who it was. That's a lot of crime follows that sort of pattern. Mm-hmm. The violent mm-hmm. crime, what we conventionally think about as crime. White collar crime is a different thing here. So when you look at the situation where we have been making these unauthorized payments in particular ministries, in the millions upon millions of dollars, mm-hmm. not collecting monies that were due, paying monies that should never have been paid, what you are actually contemplating is a situation where you could easily examine the records and see that the person who approved this whole thing was A, the committee that, that approved the whole arrangement was a committee headed by B, mm-hmm. the checks were signed by C, and you have the check numbers, you have all the details. You actually have everything you need there. You are proceed one of the, mm-hmm. with a prosecution. And in fact, the real question we have to grapple mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. It, on, on this Sunday morning, <laughs> metaphysical, is do we have the will to do better? Do we have the will mm-hmm. to do things differently? And this Guava season we are confronting is going to force many of us to grapple with those elements. Those are very important subjective elements that have a bearing on the objective circumstances of the society. Precisely one of the reasons why yeah. I raise this with yes. you, because you're an advocate who not only are there championing your cause, but you put your money where your mouth is mm-hmm. to follow through on it. Mm-hmm. And it's in that follow through that I am looking at something that I found uh, d- disturbing, because, you know, we try as much as possible to find where, in fact, we can find solutions um, and not just echo the situation. But here is the Auditor General stating <laughs> that he could not access certain information Information at the Board of Inland Revenue yeah. to form an opinion effectively on the corruption of revenue figures. The Constitution and the Audit Act clearly define that the Auditor Department must have access to all books and documents of the country's revenue related to public accounts. Frustratingly, this is not so. I mean, how could this go that the Auditor General does not have access to what's going on there? Well, you see, it's it's interesting. I don't, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not... I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not, I'm not going to be able, I'm not equipped to delve deeply into that question as, as more learned people would. What I would say is that the Auditor General is supposed to be responsible for, for issues dealing with public money mm-hmm. coming out of state, um, state 
statutory bodies, I'm sorry, and ministries. The Auditor General doesn't concern state enterprises. What I want to say is that in that light, it seems to me correct and proper that the Auditor General should have the right to interrogate mm. and examine documents within the Board of Inland Revenue. The Board of Inland Revenue seems to be holding on to some kind of an exception to, to obstruct that examination. Why they are doing that, it may be a particular a point of legal particularity. There may be more, I don't know. And just what to, are, j- just to on, legally, go on. Go on. Yeah, legally yeah. correct that, let, sure, me, sure. let me just be very go clear ahead, as yeah. to what is yeah. said here. The Auditor uh-huh. General Department could not access certain information at the Board of Inland Revenue to form an opinion effectively on the completion of revenue figures just wanted to, to, to yes. clarify that yes yeah what i wanted to say is in relation to that Rennie, because this is also a very good point what i also wanted to say Rennie, in relation to, to the board of inland revenue and the whole concept we deal with of secrecy mm-hmm. let me speak about that for a second we speak about transparency these are sort of buzzwords we speak about accountability and good governance and value for money and these conceptual buzzwords mm-hmm. And a few decades ago, it was democratization and it was democracy and power to the people. And if you can roll it back in time, there've always been buzzwords. Those are today's buzzwords mm-hmm. in public policy, equity and participation and so on. Let me say something. Eh? The societies to which we aspire, the whole notion, let's examine anything philosophically, the whole notion that an inland revenue record is a secret thing. As far as I'm concerned, that entire notion is up for discussion. I'm not going to mm. say further. The societies with whom, to whom we aspire, the United States, England, these sorts of things, the financial records, the taxes paid, the amount of money that they own, how many houses they own, how much land they own, how much shares they own, all of that information is available routinely Mm -hmm. in relation to all the political candidates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if, If Tom Smith is putting up himself to become MP for Diego Martin from the XYZ party, why don't we know how much land Tom Smith has? Except, of course, if your name is Donald Trump, you don't declare anything. But well, of course, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Donald different. is different. It's a but seriously, different. why don't mm-hmm. we know? Why don't we in Trinidad and Tobago know mm-hmm. whether Tom Smith has paid his taxes? Yes. Whether Tom Smith pays VAT in his business, whether he pays mm-hmm. PAYE. We don't know those things. So here we have this paradox. And all the time we're wrestling with the paradox. We want our country to be like there. Mm-hmm. We want the police to be like there. We want the fire to be like there. When you go to the hospital, you want it to be like there. Mm-hmm. There is somewhere in the first world, mm-hmm. and it's not here. <laughs> okay? But in fact, there, a lot of these things that we routinely accept as being secret mm-hmm. are routinely disclosed. And I'm making the point, it may not happen this year, it may not happen next year, it may not happen in 10 years' time. I'm making the point, we have to move to a point of transparency mm-hmm. in terms of public and private finance so that all of these things, all of these barriers would be removed over the passage of time. We, we have to move there if it is we want those things. That, that's, what, that's my point. If you want to move from a so-called developing world to yes. first world, then you must have a first... Um, way, first you must first have a willingness yes. uh, to bring checks and mm-hmm. balances mm-hmm. and make them real. That's right. It's the only way you're going to do it, right? That's right. Afro Raymond, as always, give me your website because I like our listeners to go up there. I'm uh, I'm almost like a subscriber. I'm up there every day yeah, you, you at your site. Just take out a membership. I'll show you how to do it if I leave. <laughs> right, the website so, is Afro Raymond, A-F-R-A-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D dot WordPress dot com. You're welcome to subscribe. It's a free subscription and you get notifications when we post things. I thank you for the opportunity to appear mm-hmm. on the on the um, uh, the brunch on the episode, Sunday brunch. Yes. yes, as always, it, yeah. it, it, it is truly a privilege to have you here, and yes. I thank you so very much. Thank you, you have yourself a good week. After. Thanks very much. And you know I'll be hitting that bell again later thank on. Thank you, listeners. Take thank care, you. my brother. Have a nice Take day. Care.